Hello. Welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now we're going uh, to plan today is we're going to try and anchor up on a wreck. A little pilchard. So the plan today is we're going to anchor up on a wreck and fish with some conger. And all I'm doing is on my way out there now come across the shoulder mackerel. So not wanting to pass up a good opportunity for some bait. Oh, oh my, what about that? All for camera. A bonito. <laughs> this is a first for me, I've never had one of these in the UK. See the, see the difference in its shape of its face? It's actually got little tiny teeth. Oh, actually, what the sharp as well. Let's get it on. See that? I don't know if he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to stick that dorsal fin up. We've got a, a dorsal like that. You see all the bars across him. Get a couple of quick photos of him getting back. Well, there he is. Look, little dorsal. Oh. A cracking little fish in it. Oh. Let's get him back in the water. Oh, it's like a bullet. Any luck, and that'll be my good deed for the day. Oh, I'm, I'm made up with that little guy. Just got out to, uh, to a wreck that I'm hoping to anchor. And all I've done is, as soon as I got to the wreck, is I, uh, I steamed around it and marked on my sounder where the wreck started and where the wreck finished. So I know roughly how big the wreck is. And then I went up tide of it, got wind of it, killed the engine, and now I'm drifting over it. Ridiculous. Now I'm drifting over the wreck, to not only to see which way the drift's going to go, but where to put the anchor. But I'm hoping to possibly pick up some pouting, which are fantastic coming with it. Now on the rod in my hand, I've just got some baiting feathers. And in this rod, I've put a live joey mackerel, and I've, I've got it about three quarters down. So if there's any pollock or any bass above the wreck, One of the things that it will show you as well is that if you can catch pouting and whiting on a wreck, it shows that there's a food source. It shows that there's a food source present on the wreck for bigger fish to eat. So fish like ling and conger, they'll eat the pouting and whiting. I've got a feeling I've picked up my live bait as well because it's just gone heavy and that's not showing very much. There we go, like I was saying, a nice big fat pouty. Perfect conga bait. See, look all I've done, just a little bit of mackerel on my feathers. Oh, that was that snag that I had first off just as soon as I started filming, snapped the hook off. Typical. Right, well past the wreck now. I'll wind this up, we'll go back and I'll have another drift. What do you want to do? You want to run down 
run down the side of it. I think I'm just outside of it. The difference of five or ten metres can be all the difference to catching the fish next to the wreck. Waiting and a little poor cod. Still work for bait. See there, two drifts that's shown three different species that's present on that wreck. So that's one thing about about big fish. You won't get big fish unless there's food present. Bigger the fish, the more food it needs. It's just, it's just simple, isn't it? Now you might have seen that I knocked the bail arm off and let some more line out. I just had like a little bit of a hit. You can generally tell when you've got a live bait on as well because if there's a predator or anything around, the bait can spot it and it starts panicking. So you'll register some trembling bites. Try one more drift over the wreck, then we'll put the anchor down. Currently in 175 feet of water, and we're drifting at about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a knot. So gee, it's pretty brisk considering it's not a big wreck. It's not, it's not fast. Still very much alive, isn't he? There's some big pouting down there, isn't there? There's some bruises, aren't there? Still very much alive and kicking. Quickly run through this rig here. It's dead simple. All I've got here is just a normal lead locked into a piece of about 10 inches. And then I've got possibly three or four feet with a, uh, a 10 or chin out. Just hook it, through the, hook it through the chin. Just hook it through the upper jaw like that. And it wants to come out between the nostrils. No further forward, no further back than between the eyes. If you go further back, you kill it. it. Won't be alive there. Let's see about putting this anchor down. Straight away, first thing I did when I put the anchor down, sat Rex just behind me here. I managed to get um, my live bait down, and then pretty much within about five seconds, something hit it. Couldn't get it out. So what I've done was I left some slack line and I'm hoping it will get it out. Yep. We're fishing two rods. We've got two decent fish on at the same time. Now, on the big boat, as you can see in the boulder, I have my wrecking rig. And on this, I have my live bait, which is just a simple sliding lead with a big chino. Now, I'm hoping that I manage to be able to get that off the bottom. So, wherever it is, Oh, it's a massive pollock. Oh. That's a double figure pollock if ever I saw one. 
size of that. What a beast. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that to be a pollock. There was no searing runs off it, it was just like a heavy twanging fight. Now on this wrecking rig, I'm expecting Ling or Conga. drop with two different rigs, two different double figure fish. And you can see look, ling taken on the bottom hook of my wrecking rig. This is the beauty of this wrecking rig, is uh, when they're hooked deep like that, what you can sometimes do is you can pull the hook out through the gill and then Pull the hook out through the gill like that, then slide the hook off. And just because it's because it's fastened to a loop, you take the hook off, like that, slide the trace. Oh, it's off. I get him on the scales, but he's he's over ten pound. The real monster is that. What a cracking pollock. Who size that mouth? Now you can't see because the hook's fallen out, but it's hooked right in the corner of the mouth there where that hole is. I mean, it was a bit, hadn't it? There's a guy down his side. There you are. The rig that caught that pollock. Just like I was saying, it's just a very simple, just a sliding lead like that. I think this is a four ounce, locked into a piece of about 10 inches. And then, say, three or four feet. Now this is 40 pound mono, and that's a Cox and Roll 10 0 Chino. Now, you can use circles, but I was just trialing out using a Chino the other day and I caught a cracking bass, so I thought I'd try it again. Look at that. Double figure, double figure pollock straight away. Fantastic hooks. Same with these. These hooks on my wrecking rig. Okay, you saw before I was slipped the hook off to get the, the hook out of that fish. All you do there is the loop. There, look. That loop. Just pass it back through the eye. Like that. And then pass the hook through the loop. There you go. Simple as that. There you go, wrecking rig. And these are cooks and roll sea beasts. Unbelievably strong, you pretty much anchored a boat with these. I've never seen one bend out, and I've never seen one snap. Now, I have done a video that'll show you how to make these. I'll put a link in. Let's, um, let's get back down and see what else we can find. It's a little bit heavier. Still must be pouting. Just 
You give a real solid bait sometimes. Feels like a good solid fish. Checking on the wrecking rig. Congaril. Nice Congaril, go double figures. See, hook perfectly, hook perfectly on the bottom hook of my wrecking rig. He'll go, I don't know, he'll maybe go 12 pound. Just two bar him off. Down he goes. Like I, say, like I said, nothing complicated. Oh, catch his fish. Currently sitting at 177 feet of water. We've got about, about another two hours, two and a half hours of the, of the ebb. Now, they aren't big tides at the moment. The tide's not flowing very fast. So I'm using a 10 ounce lead with this bit. Because there's that much bulk, because there's two big muppets and two big bait, and the line isn't exactly for finesse, the 10 ounce is just about holding it. Oh. Oh, I missed it. Must have dropped that right on a fish's nose. See there with the, the fish on wrecks like this, once they start feeding and once there's a few of them competing. Oh, a monster pouting. Can you believe that took that big hook and that big bait? What a greedy bugger. Yeah, like I was saying, once you get once you get the fish feeding on a wreck and they're competing with each other for food for bait. If you do a good bite and you miss it, just drop it straight back down again. Because chances are, even if that fish doesn't come back, another one likely will. Oh, I'm sweating now. Now on this rod I've been fishing my wrecking rig pretty much straight up and down. On the other rod you can see, I've actually got a running ledger. And all I've got is about three foot of 200 pound mono with, a, with another yeah, 10 or meter cut. And that one I've put like quite a big fish bait. So that's, the, that's the rod that I'm hoping for my big congo. Something pecking at you now. The problem is, you see with that pouch in there, the softer baits, like your fish baits, your mackerel baits, like when there's loads of pouch in the white, they'll just tear to pieces. 
them, they might destroy the bait before the bigger fish is managed to find it. Now ultimately that's not such a bad thing. Because with all these little fish chewing your baits up, it creates like quite a big scent trail. But you've just got to keep an eye on it because if you're getting loads of little trembling bites and it just stops. It usually means that you've had loads of little fish pecking at you and then the bait's gone. An absolute monster pouting. Okay. What a bruiser. See look where the pouting are just just shredding the bait. Trying to go back down, give him a chance. He might make it. It's a problem with some fish like pouting and whiting and pollock, and ling especially. They don't cope very well coming to the surface. They suffer really badly with barotrauma. We've noticed that quite a lot of them have got like a big sack in their mouth after a swim bladder. And it's just they haven't been able to equalize the pressure quick enough. Same as like when a, a deep sea diver gets the bends. If this bait gets to the bottom and I get another pouting on straight away, I'm going to switch to using a pouting bait. Monster pouting. Not what I'm after though. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pouting on. Use a pouting head. Like a pouting flapper or something. Hopefully that way the pouting won't eat it. There it is. Sliding ledger rig that I've got. It's only very simple, like I say, just a sliding lead like that. And once we've got two to three feet of, uh, I think this is 200 pound mono, and a coxswain raw meat hook. And like I said, I'm just going to put a pouting flapper on. Now all I've done there is I've just kept the head and half the fillets and cut them into strips, left all the guts inside. So it's a nice big smelly bait. I'm just going to run the hook through, through the head. Now, I saw how tough that was. That hook hole there, because it's in that skull, is very strong. But, you're looking at the size of this bait, it's going to have to be a big fish that eats this bait. So, when you start getting a bite, you've got to give it loads of time, because it's got to manage to swallow all of this to find that hook. Now, pouting heads, pouting flapper, can be fantastic bait for conger. It's, it's what's present there on the wreck, it's what they're eating day by day. And hopefully, because it's a pouting, the rest of the pouting that are down there won't eat that bait. That's the theory anyway. Most fish you'll find will be quite cannibalistic, but that's quite a big bait. Hopefully we'll manage to turn it into an even bigger conger. Got a new reel. I'm just trialing it out. I've just just bought it second hand off a guy on uh, on Facebook. Funny enough. It's on the bottom. Now, well, it is a bit upmarket for for what I'm used to. I don't uh, I don't generally like to spend a lot of money on my tackle. But um, it was for a fantastic price and it's in great condition. 
and hopefully it's going to help me catch some fantastic fish. Well, it's the target species, but it's just probably one of the smallest ones I've ever had off a wreck. Almost too small to call a conger. You know, he's absolutely tiny. on the bottom. I'm going to hit that because there is something that's playing with it. And like I've said about conga bites before, sometimes they can sit and just kind of just play with it in their mouth. And then other times they can hold it in their mouth and then not move, just sit still with it. And if you try and strike too soon, they just open their mouth and bait comes out. Just be another little tiny one. I reckon we could do a bite on again. Didn't have it in its mouth properly. Got to hope that somewhere in amongst all of these small fish there's going to be the daddy. The bite that we're getting on this, it's just like a, it does, it's bounced with the waves and it just goes, it's like another double rack. That's time, whatever it is. He's got a good bite on this with the rod. Swimming towards me. So you look, it's had it all in its mouth, just didn't have it far enough to get the hook. That was because I struck too soon. Now that could have just been a smaller reel and it couldn't get the whole thing in its mouth. Boat shame, I will never know. When I first struck, it was there. When I got to the top and it must have been swimming upwards because it went slack. And then when I stopped, I felt a couple more bites. That was obviously just it rasping and spitting the bait out, which is a shame. But the same again on the pouting head bait. Some really good bites and then it's just started like pulling down. So I've given it a little bit of line. Now that's a risky tactic because I'm that close to the wreck, giving it any line could mean it ends up in the wreck. I really want it to take the bait this time. Hopefully the hook's found the holes now. like an okay fish. No, 
Now once you've hooked them, there really is no reason, no need to rush. Could be a high 20. I'm gonna need my gloves for this one. Yeah, it'll go 20 pound. Yeah. He's a good stocky fish, with a fat head on him. There we go, pouting head worked. like I said it would. Is that bit? Now you, you might have noticed I've got a muppet on there. Now in this instance it's not for attraction. It's for abrasion resistance. So that the Congress teeth when it's rasping and, and spinning and fighting like that they don't rip all the line up and it snap off. As soon as I get this down to the bottom, I'll show you that fish. There's a bit of condensation on the inside of the lens. I don't know how that's money swapping. I hope it hasn't. I hope it hasn't spoiled the video. Now the trick to handling eels is don't be scared of them. Now you see where I'm putting my fingers there? Just inside the gills. If you want to see your fingers inside of there, it can't bite you. Now it'll twist and it'll ride, but it won't get you. Going back over the side. That's one of the things that I mentioned earlier on about like your pouting, your weighting, your pollock, your link. When the swim bladders blow, it never happens to eels. They'll fight all the way to the surface, fight all the way back down again. I'm hoping this is a sign that the fish have come on the feed, because I'm getting bites on both rods. When fishing for eels like this, first 10 seconds is crucial because if you don't get them up away from that wreck they'll get back in it another, another nice dark fish slightly smaller than the last Like I say again, another dark one. You usually find that fish living on the reefs. They usually find the fish living on the reefs are dark. Dark brown to almost black. Whereas the ones living on the wrecks, they're usually paler, almost grey, like that little one that I caught. As you can see, this one actually. This one's badly wounded on one side, it's lost an eye on one side. Let's see if I'm turning around. Look. Yeah, I mean, he, might, he might go 10. He might go 10 pounds. Once you manage to get fish feeding like that on a wreck, can be quite hectic because as long as the bait's down there they're competing with each other so they're very quick to take it whereas if they're just ambling around and they're, they're not really bothered and a, they can pick and choose they might come up and have a sniff of a bait and they don't really like it they can, they can leave it
Okay, there's like a good fish. Try to keep it on the wreck. <laughs> Line on the other road's gone slack. There's every chance that this fish could be wrapped up in that other line as well. There's even an outside chance it might have picked up both bait. For congas, you can keep your head going in. If you can keep your head going up, going in the direction of the surface. You generally don't have too hard a time with them. So when you give them a chance to turn and get their head down, you can run back towards the wreck. Big fat dark one. It's got, it's got both rigs wrapped up. Lucky was that. Now it snapped me off and was just kind of hanging around under the boat. Managed to get it in the net. Now, other rig, I might have lost it all, it might have snapped, it might have parted me off. It dropped, I could I watched it go. I had a problem there, the reason it snapped me off. Was I, as I had hold of it and it was fighting to go back, there was no giving the line, so I just parted it. There we go. See, it's been rubbing up its teeth. And as soon as it pulled against my hand, that was it, it snapped it. Well, I've lost my lead, but saved the rig. You know, I'm not too upset about that. Exactly the same as before. All I've done is I've just taken the front half of a pouting, and again it's just a cock and roll meat hook, and just put it through. Now it is tough. But you're relying on that. Now, now that's a very strong hook hold. That bait there, look, with all the with all the guts and everything still in it. There you are. All I've got is slightly short, this is about two foot. Got a uh, cox and roll, ball bearing barrel swivel. And literally all I do is connect it up. This is a, a cox and roll number five or number six, I can't remember. A number, we'll call it a number five coast lock. Just a sliding lead. Like I was saying earlier on about, I was using mackerel, but I decided to make a change to use pouting because the pouting was smashing me up all the time. Got a real good bite on this wood now. I'm really glad I made the change because you've seen I had three fish on that one pouting. Head. The last one being a real good one, it's still on the deck. It might bring, it might go 30 pounds. Wait, still there. Be a little pouting. Yeah, another pouting. Keep hold of him for another bait. It's already showing interest. 
on that pouting head. So all the all the pouting showing up all my all my mackerel baits earlier on has obviously brought all the fish onto the feed, which is a perfect situation. It is risky sometimes fishing two rods at the same time. Because if you get two big fish at the same time, you could potentially end up losing both. You need to be really on the ball. Often what you'll see me do is, if I hook into one, I'll try and wind the other one up off the bottom so it's out of the way. That's what's left of that pouting bait that I had on before. Oh, right, he's finally calmed down long enough for me to get hold of him. See how, how big he is there. He's <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna bother weighing him, he'll be. He'll be over 20, but it won't go to high 30. Straight down. Feels like a big fish. So doing very well to get it out of the wreck. Now that is a big eel. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there. That'd be a 40 pound deal there. I'm trying to let it tear itself out. You can see it's still pulling drag off. I can't let it tie itself out, so I want to get it on board the boat. It's not just going to wreck the place. He's a big fish. <laughs> so plain with it, I could see you bumping it every now and again. Whew. Well, that was definitely worth messing around and resetting the anchor for. Anyway, 
go to the base. Look at the size of that. What an absolute beast that one is. Still touching the ground. Easily 40 pound. I'm not even going to bother trying to wear this guy, it's just too big. One last look at him. What size of that? What an absolute beast. He's not hanging around here, they're straight down. Yeah, there's a load of chum that bust in. I'm going to see if I can, once I can get that snag out. I'll slip the anchor and we'll go and see if we can see him. Well, there we go. We've um, the tide's turned now and I've had to pull the anchor again. We, do. we didn't manage, I got up to them tuna and as soon as I got to them they just disappeared and then they turned up where I'd been and when I followed them they disappeared again. Just chasing my tail for half an hour. Massive fish as well, easily six foot. Big around. Good um, What a great day of sport. Caught that same. Um, caught that little bonito first thing. I was made up with that. Um, tons of massive pouting. First drop, we managed to have um, a nice link and a nice pollock as well. And then throughout the day, I've had about, I don't know, 15, 15, 16 congrees. That last one being the biggest one. Be 40 odd pound. Good fun. Um, I hope. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself. I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed it. It's been a nice day. Plenty of fish. And, uh, Hopefully there's been some tips and some hints in there that might help you catch some of your own. Let's see what this is. So a mackerel and a pro cod. I think on that note, see you later.